Assalamu alaikum. Today in this tutorial, we are going to talk about the phalanges. As we have already discussed about the metacarpals and the carpal bones in detail in previous tutorial, today we are moving forward to discuss about the phalanges. We know that there are 14 phalanges in total in each hand, 3 for each finger and 2 for the thumb. So in total there are 14 phalanges and each phalange has a base, a shaft and a head. As we did in case of uh, metacarpals, the same applies in the phalanges, in case of the phalanges, uh, that means it has three important landmarks, three important parts, a base right over here and a shaft, this one, and the head. Starting from the second digit up to the fifth digit, there are three phalanges and these three phalanges are named as according to their position, means uh, this phalange is the most uh, proximal one, that is why this is called the proximal phalange, these four phalanges are called the proximal phalange, as well as this also the proximal phalange for the thumb. So in total we have five proximal phalanges and the position of this uh, phalange is in the middle, that is why it is called middle phalanges. So in total we have only four middle phalanges because the thumb misses the middle phalange. And lastly, this one is the most uh, distal part of the bones of the hand. And so uh, these five bones are called the distal phalanges. So we have five distal phalanges, four middle phalanges and five proximal phalanges. In the proximal phalanges, the bases are marked by a concave oval facet for the articulation with the metacarpal bones. However, in the distal and in the middle phalanges, it is marked, right over here, it is marked by two small concave facets separated by a small ridge. Right over here, you can see, it is, uh, I'm drawing in the three-dimensional figure, so one oval facet right over here, and this is another oval concave facet, so two concave oval facets are separated by these smooth rays. So one ridge separates the two oval concave facets. For the shaft, the dorsal surface is convex from side to side, and uh, the palmar surface is gently concave. And as for the head, in the proximal and the middle phalanges, this proximal and the middle phalanges, the head has a pulley shaped articular surface. Pulley shaped articular surface because they are articulating with the next phalange. But in the distal phalange, as you can see here, in the dis distal phalange, the head, the head is non-articular. It is uh, not articular. And that is why it is not pulley shape. Talking about the insertions of the muscles, here I am starting from the lateral side, uh, from the thumb, from the first digit here, and this is the proximal phalanx of the thumb. Here we see clearly that there are three important insertions. Uh, the first one on the lateral side is the abductor pollicis brevis, which abducts the thumb, and this abductor pollicis brevis being inserted on the lateral side of the palmar surface of the base. On the middle side of the palmar surface of the base is the first palmar interogeous muscle. This first palmar interogeous muscle originates from the first metacarpal bone. And the third one, adductor pollicis, it is being inserted on the medial border of the shaft of this proximal phalanx. And the distal phalanx here, it is the flexor pollicis longus, flexor pollicis longus being inserted on the palmar surface of the base of the distal phalanx. Coming to the second uh, digit, here is the single attachment of the muscle. This is the insertion of the second palmar interogeous muscle and it originated from the uh, metacarpal, the second metacarpal bone. And it is the single bone inserted on the palmar surface of the base medially on this proximal phalanx of the second digit. 
and on the middle phalanx there is the insertion of the flexor digitorum superficialis and it separates it divides into two splits one for the lateral one and one for the medial border of the shaft so these two uh, these two splits are inserted on these two borders and this is the flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor digitorum profundus is inserted on the base of the distal phalanx not only about the second digit it is the, the, the tendon of flexor digitorum profundus uh, are also inserted on the remaining three digits on the third digit we clearly see that the proximal uh, phalanx the proximal phalanx on the palmar surface there is no insertion attachment to the muscle but on the middle phalanx and on the distal phalanx the same attachments as in the second digit the tendon of flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor digitorum superficialis are uh, being inserted here as for the fourth digit here is the insertion on the palmar surface of the base uh, laterally palmar surface of the base of the proximal phalanx here is the insertion of the third palmar interosseous muscle uh, which uh, originates from the fourth metacarpal bone and the remaining are the same these are the same as here and the fifth digit it has the insertion of the two important muscles of the fifth digit on the palmar surface of the base on the lateral side is the flexor digiti minimi which flexes the uh, fifth digit so flexor digiti minimi right over here and this one is the abductor digiti minimi which abducts the fifth digit on the medial side of the palmar surface of the base of the proximal phalanx of the fifth digit and the middle one and the distal one it has the same attachment as in the second third and the fourth digits that is all about the phalanges on the palmar surface now we are moving to the dorsal surface of the phalanges surface of the phalanges and the attachments of the muscles are clearly seen and these are easily understandable because you see on the first digit that is the thumb the attachments are the extensor pollicis brevis and extensor pollicis longus which are similar in function and the names are similar except the brevis and the longus means the smaller one and the longer one the shorter one and the longer one so the attachments of the muscles on the proximal phalanx of the first digit is on the dorsal surface of the base this is the extensor pollicis brevis and right over here this is the extensor pollicis longus so you can easily remember these two muscles on the thumb on the dorsal surface and coming to the next digit the second digit the insertion of the muscles are the same there are two splits of insertion of dorsal digital expansion which we usually uh, call as the triangular aponeurosis which starts from the proximal phalanx but I am not drawing the structure right over here on the dorsal surface the triangular aponeurosis will be spread over these uh, dorsal surfaces of the proximal phalanx and it continues the tendon and it inserts on the on the base of the distal phalanx here so these four are the points of insertion of the uh, tendon of the extensor digitorum so the extensor digitorum splits the two splits this is the first this is the second one but we call this is the terminal extensor tendon and this one is the central slip of tendon this central uh, slip of tendons continues to insert finally on the terminal extensor tendon as terminal extensor tendon on the base of the distal phalanx that is all about the phalanges thank you for watching if you didn't subscribe the channel subscribe it right now and switch the notification on for getting information of any new uploading videos thank you so much until next time have a nice day